This is the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast, session number 49, Multiple Issues with Larry Elman. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. Welcome back, and here is a very interesting session, actually pulled from the recent Master Hypnotist course that I was proud to present along with Larry and Cheryl Elman here in Virginia. We had a great group of 18 students who traveled in from all over the country, and in this podcast session today, I'm actually going to invite you into the class to actually listen in for one of the discussions that popped up at one point, and I'll give you the brief history behind this moment. Specifically, a student in the group that had some other previous hypnosis training was asking the question about, can you combine multiple issues into one hypnotic session? So issues such as smoking and weight loss, or even combining an issue such as stress and worry and anxiety as well. And you're going to hear in this brief clip from the class, myself, as well as Larry Elman, Dave Elman's son, sharing some thoughts on that perspective. So let's jump right in. This is session number 49, Multiple Issues with Larry Elman. How's that for a session title? If you want to go for seven or eight at once, you've got probably the correct answer. If you're asking about putting together, let's say, the three you mentioned, that's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. It depends upon how you do it, and it depends upon you being wise enough to pick which of those of that bunch not just is the most important which of them can feed into the others let's take the three you gave and i'll tell you what strategy i would use i'd start with self-image enhancement first of all it's the easy one to do second of all it spreads across the others and becomes a foundation So I picked the one that allows me to then relate the others back to it and build on it. Between weight and smoking, I'd have to see the client have some idea of what the motivations are. But you could pick whichever one of those would allow you to build a framework on which you hang the whole three. So doing three at once is fine. Doing five at once, I've never hit it. Doing eight at (laughs) once, I'd be scared of it. But whoever tried to tell you to do only one or at most two in a session is self-limiting. But again, it depends upon the client and the situation. Somebody comes in for a very narrowly defined but extremely, to them, emotionally painful item, it may be unwise to hit a bunch of other things at once. Somebody comes in for something that is commoner and broader I would frequently go for an image enhancement to give them the armor to go to the other, which is an example, too. From there, you can get the idea I just said of you can do more than one, but you've got to pick which one builds a foundation for everything else you're doing. Yeah, and I'm connecting a few thoughts here. Then I'll make a statement that's in the context of weight loss, but the statement could be made for all other issues we possibly work with. Recognize that the term emotional eating has very specific connotations to it. Some people would hear emotional eating and go, well, I'm not sitting in bed crying and eating Oreos, so I'm not an emotional eater. But every feeling that is not hunger is an emotion. I'm bored. That's an emotion. I'm stressed. That's an emotion. I think I'd like that thing right now when I'm not even hungry. So connect that now to alcohol. Connect that now to smoking. The favorite example of this is this woman who calls me. She's on my website and she goes, I don't think you might be qualified to help me with my issues. I've got major fears. And I see you work with smokers and weight loss people and all these little silly issues that people come in with. I have real fears. How do I know you're even qualified? And I responded, well, the reason I get success with those silly little habits is because in most cases, we're going after that feeling inside of you that has everything to do with why you're doing that. So that's why actually yours forgive spinning the words back at you, may seem in comparison a silly little issue because you're just coming in with a fear as opposed to coming in with fears and habits attached to it. Oh, okay. So, I mean, that's how I reframed it back to go, 
I would say you can't work on these habits. There's a phrase, I forget the reference, and it's bending language, that a habit is just simply permanent memory with a physical manifestation attached to it, that you're still working with emotions, you're still working with behaviors. Yes, they're engaging in a habit, but it's a temporarily permanent memory that has a physical manifestation attached to it. So I look at everything is emotionally based, everything. So to ever tell someone you can't do smoking and stress at the same time, well, when are you smoking the most? When are you snacking? When are you biting your nails? When are you drinking? I think it's a disservice not just to the hypnotist, but it's a disservice to the client, but also it's just connecting the whole mind-body side of things. There's something triggering it. There's something putting it in place. So I would say every session has to have at least two components inside of it if it's got a habit attached to it. How many times have you gone to a doctor because this arm hurts and you report that and he works on that and because this is hurting badly, you don't bother also telling him that you've got a big swelling on this leg that needs taken care of as well. And when you do, it's, oh, we only do one thing at a time. Have you had that experience? I have. I'm ready to fire that doctor. Because in one case, he kept doing that to me for two and a half years with the item that he got told second, not because it was second, but because he'd heard it before and I had a great deal of pain in the other. After two and a half years of non-treatment, it's become a major issue. Similarly, when you have somebody coming to you, if they have multiple issues, your job is to prioritize them and to figure which ones can help you build on handling the others. And the examples Jason just gave fall totally into that category. He picked emotional eating as a good and central example because it really represented all of the others. Your job is to figure out what item here is analogous to what he just said. He used emotional eating. I used uh, image and self-image enhancement. There are many that can be used as you go further and as you have clients, you will see that in the case of most people, notice I didn't say all, there are only three or four of these that are really effective and you'll begin saying, I wonder if this, this, and this are attached to so-and-so because that's where I'm going to start if they are. There are thousands of things you're going to run into but as far as how they connect, there's three or four very common connection points. They're not everything, but they're a large enough percentage of the population, so they give you a starting place. Look for that, and don't be afraid to handle more than one issue. As he just pointed out, a whole bunch of these relate together. Somebody who's both overweight and smoking, they may be afraid that if they give up cigarettes, the other will get worse. And the two of them may be stemming from the same emotion. And, you know, I could go on at length, but I'm guessing for the particular client, in this case, I don't have the case history in front of me. But that's the sort of mental guessing you're doing during the intake process so you know where you're going to go. And look at the looping nature of something. I smoke because I'm stressed. I'm stressed because I'm smoking. So there's got to be some connection there. The, the only filter I'd throw in here is that I can fold in weight loss suggestions into my stop smoking process, but I'm less certain folding in stop smoking suggestions into my weight loss process. From a very simple perspective, this explains it. There are two types of light switches. One is either on or off, and one is a dimmer switch. Smoking is a light switch. For most people, their goal is to come in and stop. And for weight loss, we can tell them to stop, but that would get dangerous after a couple of days. <laughs> they have to continue eating. So if it's an abundance of food, if that's the, you just got it. If there's, a, if there's an issue of they're eating too much and that's part of it, then we've got a dimmer switch and we're turning it down, which is where philosophically speaking, the smoking and the weight loss would be two very different categories because one is full completion, stop it. The other is do it to the appropriate amount. So that's why I'd say I feel more comfortable folding in weight loss suggestions into a stop smoking process but less confident folding and stop smoking suggestions into a weight loss process. This goes back to my prioritize. And yeah. Just given a very, very cogent process <laughs> for that particular prioritization. 
So the bottom line to your original question is you were given in your course a self-limiting statement and you've got to unself-limit. But having done so, he's added the point that you then have the responsibility of sorting what you got. This is an unfair statement, but sometimes behind that statement is that there really aren't many scripts written for multiple issues. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a generalization. The strategy I tend to use is they call me, they've got a laundry list. Tell you what, what's the most important to you right now? And they usually I'll focus that question around specific behaviors. And in most cases, and I can say this, I only have one exception to this, that smoking and weight loss were both presented, 99.9% .9 of the time they target the smoking first. Then from there, it's where when we're back from the break, we can talk about waking hypnosis, waking suggestion, and then fold into the regression. So that it's good to which, which is, add one thing yeah. to what you just said. And that is that you had opened with there are very few scripts that are multiple issue scripts. One of the smartest things he's done this entire course is every time we've grabbed a piece of pattern that other people might say is a script, but from our point of view, it's pattern from which you're going to build a procedure. Every single time he's done that, he said, but you could use it for more issues than the one it's written for here. And given an example, okay, keep that in mind. His comment about there are very few multiple issue scripts. Hey, I don't care if there are very few multiple issue scripts. One of the big points of this course has been teaching you how to take anybody else's pattern, treat it not as a script, but as a mental framework from which you're going to build what you need for this client. And if you have to modify it to become a multiple issue script, you've got the tools for that. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast at WorkSmartHypnosis.com. Hey, it's Jason Lynette with one last quick thing. And in this podcast session today, we spent some time talking about your hypnosis practice. The question is, well, what about your hypnosis business? And for that, I've got a very good solution for you. Head over to HypnosisBusinessBootCamp.com. On that page, you'll learn all about my system, my replicatable roadmap towards how I built a successful hypnosis business. The ins and outs of all sorts of business items, it's like Netflix for your hypnosis business. Check out the dozens of positive reviews over on that site, hypnosisbusinessbootcamp.com. Hey, it's Jason here, and I want you to be the first to find out as we upload new content here online. So do this right now. Click subscribe right next to this video, and you will be the first to find out as I share further resources, further downloads, and other really cool things to come your way. See you soon.